Hi and hello, I am Athena Pondin here. In this video, we are going to see about or we are going to list it out some of the most important exams required for studying undergraduate and postgraduate studies in abroad. And what is the validity of that particular exam? What is the exam duration of that particular exam? Everything we are going to see in this video. that is called as an international English language testing system. That particular IELTS score is required for some of the universities in UK, US and Canada, Singapore and Australia and some other countries. This particular IELTS, what has happened in this IELTS is it consists of two different modules. One is academic module and the second is a general training module. The second general training module is nothing but uh, it is not for the academic study, not for the studying purpose. If you want to work over there in abroad or if you want to uh, get a training program in abroad, you need to uh, clear this particular second module of exam. So for studying purpose, if you go for undergraduate studies or postgraduate study or a PhD, you are required this academic module exams. This academic module consists of four different parts in that the first is listening, second is reading, third is writing and the last is speaking. So this exam course, uh, the exam duration is around 2 hours 45 minutes. Each and every uh, part is having uh, some of the uh, uh, minimum, uh, minimum uh, core duration of uh, time. In that the uh, first listening consists of uh, 30 minutes. You need to uh, uh, finish the exam within 30 minutes of listening. And the reading and writing each, each uh, part having uh, 60 minutes reading 60 minutes and the writing 60 minutes and for the speaking you are taking around 11 to 15 minutes so this is the parts of parts duration and the total duration of this exam is 2 hours 45 minutes the most importantly the listening reading and writing that is happen in a single day but the speaking there is not in that particular day it is happen it is maybe happen in before 7 days or after 7 days of the exam so according to these uh, four different parts, they are calculating some of the cumulative marks. They call it as a band score. So the band score is calculated and they are saying the average of uh, minimum of 0 to 9 that is called as a band score. So according to that, the, some of the universities fix the eligibility. For example, uh, some of the universities from US, they have fixed the eligibility score as a 6.5. Uh, the eligibility criteria for the uh, uh, students, those who are entering into the university, you need to score 6.5 in IELTS, like that they are framing. So the band score, they call it as a band score from 0 to 9. 0 indicates that if you are applying for the exam, you are not writing the exam, that is called as a 0. From 1 it starts, from 1 it is not sufficient. According to that, they are giving the average, the 9 is outstanding. So some of the universities average score, you need to score 6.5. Some of the most reputed universities, they are uh, uh, they are asking 7.5, 7 to 7.5 IELTS score. So this is the scores, uh, uh, this is the uh, IELTS exam modules and exams and scores. Then validity of this particular IELTS is around two years. Next exam is TOEFL, that is called as a test of English as a foreign language. This TOEFL exam is founded by the Cambridge University UK. So most of the universities in UK having the eligibility criteria, they require this TOEFL exam and some of the universities in UK, Russia, China and uh, Singapore and Australia require this TOEFL exam as eligibility. So what has happened in this TOEFL is uh, it consists of two different exams. One is internet based test and another one is paper based test. The candidate should write both the exams. So in the internet based test as usual, it, it consists of four different parts. One is uh, listening, reading writing and speaking. The course, the, the time duration for completing this IBT is uh, around 3 hours 5 minutes. And for the BPT that is paper based test, it also uh, except speaking, all these are included. One is uh, uh, reading and the structure and the written comprehension and listening and writing. So these are all the parts involved in this paper based test. The hour duration is around 2 hours 30 minutes. So the totally, if you are if you are going to write this IBT and the PPT, they are calculating the score band is differently. For the IBT, they are calculating the different score, and for the BPT, they are calculating the different score. In the universities also, they are asking that the eligibility criteria TOEFL for the IBT, this is an average score, and for the BPT, this is an average score. So you need to score a minimum of uh, certain marks from IBT, and you need to score the minimum of certain marks from the BPT. 
So the, uh, the score band is nothing but uh, the score band for the IBT exam is from 0 to 120 and for the score band for the uh, BBT that is paper based exam is uh, around 3102 677. So average score required for studying any universities and require any universities which required the TOEFL. Uh, the safer side is you need to score minimum of 85 or more in uh, the IBT and you need to require to score a 550 or more that is a safer zone to study any universities because most of the universities require this particular average marks and the validity for this TOEFL exam is 2 years. The next exam is called as a GRE that is called as a graduate record examination. This particular graduate record examination is required only for the candidate those who are studying masters not for the UG that is not for the undergraduate. Uh, if you want to study master, master's degree or a postdoctoral degree or a PhD, you need to require this GRE exam for the so many universities. So what has happened in this GRE is as usual as TOEFL and IELTS, it also include a computer based exam and a paper based exam. This computer based exam includes uh, six different sections and that first is a uh, uh, written analytical writing, uh, it involves only one section and uh, verbal, uh, I'm sorry, uh, verbal reasoning it includes two sections and quantitative reasoning it also includes two sections and for the last experimental or research. So totally six different sections we have and the last experimental or research marks is not included in the final score. So this exam is GMAT, it is called as a graduate management admission test. This is uh, mostly uh, this particular exam is required for uh, some of the business school. For the biomedical, there are so many MBA courses are also available that is called as a hospital administration, health informatics, uh, health management and hospital management. These are all the MBA courses are also available for studying uh, um, for MBA biomedical engineering. So this particular GMAT is required particularly for studying MBA courses. The total duration of this particular exam is uh, 3 hours. Uh, the validity for this GMAT is around 5 years. So if you are written one time, then you are eligible to eligible to use that particular scorecard for the next 5 years. So this is, uh, what is the need of, uh, I am saying this GMAT is, uh, uh, most of the biomedical engineer, engineers are also studying uh, MBA. That is, uh, there are so many uh, uh, courses are available in MBA. Uh, the like uh, MBA hospital management, MBA hospital administration, MBA health management. So that is what I am saying a GMAT is also required for those who are willing to study MBA biomedical engineering in abroad. The next exam is called as a SAT, it is called the a scholastic aptitude test. This particular exam is mostly required by the US universities uh, for the undergraduate study they required the SAT exam, exam score. This SAT also includes a reading, writing languages and one more addition is max calculation. Math calculation is required for uh, uh, preparing this SAT exam and this particular uh, exam validity is around 5 years and the course and uh, the exam duration is around 3 hours 45 minutes. This particular SAT is purposely for studying UG in USA. These are the most important popular exam required for uh, the students, those who are willing to study abroad, those who are willing to study a, a master's degree in biomedical engineering or undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering or postdoctoral in biomedical engineering or PhD in biomedical engineering, these are all the exams will help you. So according to your journal and according to your domain, you are just choose your uh, a score and you just choose your exam and go to the country and study further. That's all about the video. Thanks a lot.